How's it going everybody, it's Stas here and in this video I want to share with you all how you can build a beast stock market portfolio heading into the year of 2020 and all throughout 2020. I want to share with you all a couple of thoughts going through my head right now, what I'm personally focusing on and how you can apply that to your investing strategy, whether you're a growth investor, a value investor, maybe you invest in penny stocks whatever it may be. I also want to focus on a couple of things that could cause a lot of uncertainty in the stock market in the year of 2020. And we all know as investors, as people in the stock market, uncertainty is one thing the market does not like. When there's uncertainty, there's volatility. A lot of the times stock prices are falling aggressively. But for people that are contrarians, people that go against the grain, this is the perfect time to buy. So if you guys enjoyed the video, hit that like button, consider subscribing, and let's talk about three things that could hurt the stock market in 2020. So the first thing is definitely the trade war, guys. And this is something that's been affecting the stock market for about two years at this point. And this trade war is between the US and China. If you guys don't know about this, you've probably been living under a rock. The constant back and forth between US and China, tariffs being slapped on each other, deadlines being pushed back, negotiations not working. This is putting a lot of uncertainty into these markets and heading into 2020 guys and in 2020 it seems like we're not even going to get a trade deal because yesterday the day before I recorded this video Donald Trump came out saying he's okay with waiting until after the presidential election to come to a trade deal with China and that's over a year away here guys well actually a little bit under a year so there's not really a rush here to get into a trade deal from China Trump's perspective and this could definitely damper these markets even further because the markets let's be honest guys they want a trade deal because that means more certainty which in turn leads to stock prices most likely going up and that kind of leads us into another thing I'm looking at which is going to be the presidential election guys and everything involved with the debates and everything leading up to the election itself I definitely think this can impact the markets as well either to the upside or to the downside and it's something that you should be watching especially if you're investing in 2020 and the last thing that I'm focusing on and it's always in the back of my mind honestly guys is we're at the end of this bull market or we're nearing the end of this bull market so investing towards the end of a bull market is a lot different than investing obviously in the beginning of a bull market, right? So that's kind of what I'm thinking here heading into 2020 and all throughout 2020, I'll be thinking these same things. And a lot of other big, you know, hedge fund managers like Ray Dalio, they've been coming out kind of spooking the public, saying there's going to be a recession right around the corner, putting a huge bet against the stock market. So all throughout 2020, there's going to be a lot of uncertainty. There's going to be a lot of volatility in my personal opinion. So taking into account all of these different risk factors, the presidential election, the trade war, the end of the cycle, recession fears, let's talk about how you can build a beast portfolio in 2020, what I'm personally doing, and then we'll talk about the hypothetical scenario of me investing 10,000 bucks in 2020. How would I personally do that? So other than those three points that we talked about another thing that I'm focusing on is the stock market being at all time highs guys the S&P, the Dow, the NASDAQ, they've been absolutely crushing it over these past couple of months. And what is that doing? That's bringing up the value of the stocks, guys, in the stock market, meaning you're not getting as much of a bang for your buck when it comes to investing in these individual stocks. So for that reason, I'm not being as aggressive in these markets right now as I was, let's say, for example, towards the beginning of 2019 after we experienced that 
that massive drop. So back then I was aggressive because the valuations of the companies were a lot lower. But since then we've ran up, we're heading into 2020 at all time highs at this point in time. So that's leading me to be a bit more cautious in 2020. So now that I prefaced it with that, now let's get into how I'm going to be building a beast portfolio in 2020. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is focusing on companies that have a safe yield. And by yield, I mean a dividend yield. So I'm focusing on companies that are dividend aristocrats and even dividend kings. That's even better, right? A dividend king is a company that's increase their dividends for 50 plus years. That is incredible because that shows a company is paying out and increasing dividends even through recessions. So in 2020, with all this craziness going on, if I can put my money in a company that's paying a dividend, that gives me a bit of peace of mind at the end of the day because I know I'm collecting that dividend. And a lot of the times, guys, these companies that pay dividends, they're more stable stable and they know how to get through recessions. They have the cash to get through recessions and that makes me feel a lot better. And a dividend aristocrat, I forgot to mention, is a company that pays dividends for 25 plus years and they increase their dividends for 25 plus years. And those companies also fall into this category of what I'm looking for. Some that are, you know, dividend kings or aristocrats are Johnson & Johnson, for example, 3M, right? I'm looking at companies such as McDonald's, although I don't think they are dividend king. Companies such as Procter & Gamble, Coca-Cola, Pepsi. There's a lot of smaller ones like Leggett and Platt that a lot of people love. Boring companies that have a lot of nice juicy cash flow that could be paid out to people no matter what kind of economic situation we're in. Another thing I'm focusing on is ETFs, guys. In particular, dividend paying ETFs. There's one ETF in particular that I love. It's ticker symbol NOBL. And if you want to be invested in an ETF that tracks dividend aristocrats, this is the ETF for you. Ticker symbol NOBL. Literally, guys, if you're putting your money into NOBL, that is tracking dividend aristocrats whenever they aren't aristocrats anymore, it gets taken off the list. Last time I checked, they pay around a 2 to a 3% yield, so not as high as some of these individual stocks, but remember, with ETFs, you do get a lot of diversification there, and that provides a lot of safety for some people. So NOBL is one, there's a lot of other ones, guys. SPHD is one that I really like. It's an S&P 500, low volatility, high dividend yield. ETF that I'm personally invested in looking to add more money into that. It makes sense because in volatile times, which I expect 2020 to be, a low volatility ETF will serve me right and will pay me a nice dividend yield. And I believe the yield on that one is around four to five percent the last time I checked. Another thing I'm focusing on to build a beast portfolio is to really trust my gut. And at the end of the day, this is more of a mind mindset thing. I'm not looking to invest in whatever companies that Wall Street is pushing, whatever companies the media is pushing. I'm looking to invest in undervalued companies that I personally believe in and that I see potential in no matter what type of economic situation we're in. Because at the end of the day, when I buy a stock, guys, and I'm sure a lot of you can relate to this, I'm looking to hold it for the next couple of years. So I'm looking to buy buy this stock, I don't care if in the short term it's going to be rocky. If that stock is undervalued, if they pay a dividend, which is ideal for my long-term investing philosophy and strategy that I personally follow, that is going to be an opportunity for me to buy no matter what situation the economy is in and no matter what the CNBCs of the world, the, the, the medias of the world, whatever they're saying, right? I really don't care. So that's kind of more of a mindset thing 
thing of me heading into this year of 2020 and I'm just looking to deploy capital in undervalued areas. So building a beast portfolio in 2020, it's going to take work. It's going to take work. You're going to have to sift through all of the BS in the media. You're going to have to value companies. You're going to have to analyze ETFs, whatever it may be, right? It's going to take work. But if you focus on stockpiling cash, if you focus on buying only when the company is undervalued and not at inflated prices, you should be good, right? And let's say we don't even get a buying opportunity, a big buying opportunity in 2020. That's okay because as you're building your cash position, which is also extremely important and I touched on it a couple of minutes ago, you're building more and more cash. You have a crap ton of cash. One week you have 10 grand, the next month you have 20 grand, whatever it may be, whatever your savings rate is. So the more cash you have as the stocks continue to go up, that's actually a huge advantage because you can then scoop up shares when the markets go down like they did a year ago. Last December, they crashed 20%. If that happens again, guys, and you have a lot of cash, guess what? You get to scoop up some juicy deals in the stock market in companies that you love. So let's talk about hypothetically here, if I had 10,000 bucks sitting on my table right here, if I had 10,000 bucks right here, how would I invest it right now in 2020? First and foremost, guys, I'm taking this 10,000 bucks and right off the bat, I'm cutting 40% out of it and putting it in cash. I want 40 40% at least in cash in this particular account. I'm taking 20% and I'm putting it in SPHD, which is that ETF, that low volatility, high dividend yield ETF that we talked about. I'm taking another 20%. I'm putting it in NOBL, Noble, that dividend aristocrat ETF that we talked about. So that's 40% right there. 40% in cash, that's 80%. With that remaining 20%, I'm probably going to do some stock picking. Stocks that I like right now and I actually think offer a pretty solid value are Johnson & Johnson, Facebook. Facebook, it's not as good of a value in my opinion, but I still think they're at a pretty decent value for how quick they're growing in terms of the company, right? So I'd buy a little Johnson & Johnson. I'd probably buy a tiny bit of Facebook just to get some skills skin in the game. And I'd also buy maybe like a Altria ticker symbol MO that offers a very high dividend yield and that I personally think is at a pretty solid value right now. And how I would split that 20%, I'd probably put 10% in Johnson & Johnson, let's say for example, maybe like a uh, 6% in Facebook and maybe 4% in Altria. That's kind of how I would split that 20%. So let me know down below in the comments what would you guys do if you had 10,000 bucks right now and you had to invest it? I'd love to know your guys' thoughts on that. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys, on how to build a beast stock market portfolio in 2020. You just have to remember, there's a lot of moving variables, trade war, impeachment, you know, the presidential election, Ray Dalio coming out saying what he said, the end of the economic cycle, potential recession fears. There's all of these different moving variables, but you have to sift through them, find undervalued companies, stick to cash if there's no undervalued companies, and buy when the price is right. That's how you're going to build a beast portfolio. And in my opinion, what I'm doing to build my own beast portfolio is focusing a lot on yield and low volatility ETFs right now in 2020, heading into 2020. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Hit that like, consider subscribing and also join our Strive Smart Discord chat and our Facebook group link down below. Thanks again for watching. Peace out.